In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. We continue today, Thursday, on what we started on Tuesday, I think on Tuesday, what we need to ask God for every time we go to prayer. That is, the prayers we should pray or the intentions we should put before God. Yesterday, we concluded at a point where we said that we have a duty of praying for our enemies. Let me ask you. And just sincerely so, when last did you dedicate your prayer moment to pray for that one person who has really, really broken your heart? Just last week, I asked a certain lady who came to see me in my office. After we had talked, I asked her, uh, do you still pray for your husband? And she told me, no, Father, I stopped. Ah, I stopped praying for him. I think he can, he can also pray for himself. And I don't blame people who tell me that. But it is important. As you get deeper in your spirituality, you realize that the battle is not yours to fight. In fact, as I always say, you may not pray for him as your husband, you know, but you can pray for him as a soul that needs conversion. If your husband is your enemy in this context, if your wife is your enemy in this context, whoever it is that is your enemy, even if it is your mom or your dad, I want to encourage you, please take time to pray for that one person who has really, really ruined your life, who has really, really caused you a lot, a lot of pain. Pray that you would give your time, your money, and energy. Pray that you would give your time, your money, your energy, all of them combined. Hebrew 13, 16, we read, And do not forget to do good and to share with others, for with such sacrifices, God is pleased. With such sacrifices, God is pleased. God is happy when we give whatever it is that we have. Remember, there is nothing we have that is ours. Whatever we have, we are just stewards. Pray for your church or Christian community. This is one prayer intention that is always, always remembered. And I thank God for that. But let us make it uh, more, more frequent. Praying for ch our church and our Christian communities. We, are, we have various associations and we would want to pray for all of them. This is what the Bible says in Romans 12, verses 4 and 5. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. Romans 12, 4 and 5. Pray for your city. Pray for your nation. Pray for your civic leaders. This is important. And we don't do it because in our nation um, it is time for elections. No. Did you know, dear good people, that we have a duty? Not only a civic duty, we have a religious duty to pray for our leaders. We don't pray for them because they are very good. We don't pray for them because they are very bad. We pray for them because we have our responsibility and we do that. Pray for kindness. Colossians 3.12 So as those who have been chosen to go of God, holy and beloved, put on a heart of compassion, kindness, humility, 
gentleness and patience. Colossians 3.12 Praying for kindness. In Colossians 3, there is a description of what it means to clothe yourself with Christ. In practical terms, it means choosing to adopt his qualities as your own in a permanent way that demonstrates that you have been changed forever by knowing him and giving the Holy Spirit control of your life. That is awesome. Pray for humility. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves. Philippians 2, 3. In Philippians 1, Paul implores the members of the church in Philippi to live lives worthy of the gospel of Christ. This involves both believing in him and willingly enduring suffering for the sake of the gospel. Paul knew that for a community to live this way, it would need a certain level of unity that does not come naturally. He knew the people he was writing to well enough to know the internal disputes and rivalries that would easily undermine their witness. It is important. And this is one virtue that is gradually, gradually uh, slipping out of our lives. Pray for teachability. Teachability. I'll talk about this tomorrow. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Do have a productive Thursday.